Hi guys, this is your last of the How to Survive videos for the Host Defense Host Response block. We're going to talk about the case Jenna Wilson, which you have on September 24th, which is a Monday. This is your first Monday case. So for the rest of this course, you're going to have a case on Monday and Thursday. This will be the norm throughout the remainder of your M1 year. Every once in a while, you'll have a week where you only have one case. But typically, when that happens, it's because there's either something else that's happening that week that you need to focus on, like we did in the first two weeks where we had Histology Lab Monday and Wednesday, um, or it's because the case is really, really long and difficult. Um, so that's kind of the rhyme or reason behind why you would have one case versus two cases. But so this is your first two week case. So today we have, or on Monday, we have Jenna Wilson. And then on Thursday, we have Leah Smith. Okay. And from then on, we're going to have two cases a week. All right. So um, like I said, this is the last of the How to Survive videos. By now, I hope you've started to develop your own study style for going through the self-study guides. Um, I don't know if Dr. Shannon is planning on making any. Um, if he does, it'll probably only be like one, just kind of get you used to the new block, um, and then you're kind of on your own. But that's okay, you're still gonna have a lot of the tools that we've started to use in host defense, host response, to lay a good foundation for how you should study in this curriculum. So let's get into the actual case. So you have your plan of study here. Um, you can also check the uh, actual plan of study on the Google Drive. And you can see that we're largely talking about development in Jenna Wilson, um, lymphocyte development specifically. What I mean when I talk about lymphocyte development is I mean I'm talking about how they create unique antigen receptors. Every single B cell in your body and every single T cell in your body has its own antigen receptor that is specific for one antigen and one antigen only. And it might express millions of copies of that receptor on its surface, but all of those receptors only find one antigen. And those lymphocytes are out searching every day in your body for their one true love, their actual specific antigen. So we're going to go through all of the steps that lead to the development of of this unique antigen receptor. This is really, really complex stuff, and I'll show you it below. Then we're going to get start talking about gastroenteritis. We're going to talk about all the bacterial and viral gastroenteritides. And a big chunk of your activity on Monday is going to be using pathophysiology and microbiology to basically um, determine the most likely cause of a patient's gastrointestinal infection. Okay, then you have two more things that are on here. First off, you have the pediatric physical exam. Um, this is a bit of a misnomer. This is actually the pediatric history. You're going to learn more and more about the pediatric physical exam over the next two years. Um, this particular introduction was provided by Dr. Wilkerson, who's your pediatrics um, associate discipline director. And she goes through what are kind of the big differences between an adult history and a pediatric history. It's not listed here, but it will be on the um, on the one on the Google Drive. Um, you also have a very short self-study from your practitioner role leaders, Dr. Sai, Dr. Budos, and Dr. Kishore. We're going to continue our discussion of what's in a paper case and how you use it. So you now know kind of all the parts in a case. So at this point, they're going to go through how to construct a problem statement as well as semantic qualifiers. So semantic qualifiers are basically, you know, I think of them as like the adjectives of the um, problem list. So you don't just say the patient had diarrhea, you say the patient had acute diarrhea. Um, so it kind of gives you some quantification that will help you further understand your clinical um, reasoning. Um, I want you to keep in mind that the first formative is on Wednesday, so you have this case on Monday and the first formative on Wednesday. The material in this self-study guide will not be on your formative on Wednesday. The Wednesday formative is going to focus on your Jamie Lopez case, your Robert May case, your histology labs, and your professional sessions. If you understand those things, you're in good shape for your formative. But you might want to take some time to study. And also make sure you take some time to rest because white coat is on Sunday. I hope you have a wonderful time with your families. It's a really exciting, nice ceremony. And I look forward to seeing you all in your shiny brand new white coats. All right, let's talk a little bit about what else we're doing. 
Um, so here's your table of contents. Here is your case. You can see you actually get a good amount of information um, on the physical exam, which you can go through. For immunology, like I said, this is complex stuff. Um, you can watch the videos. You can also read through the notes. Um, the notes follow the videos exactly for the most part. Um, there are two osmosis videos in here, X-linked A-gamma globulinemia, or XLA, and DeGeorge syndrome. We're not going to focus on these in depth. These are kind of just FYI, okay? You can watch them if you're curious about them, but you will not be tested about the pathophysiology surrounding XLA and DeGeorge in this block. We will talk about it in your life cycle block next year. However, I do expect you to know a couple key features about these diseases that are listed in the notes, and I'll show you where below, okay? So here's where we go through all the different stages of B cell development. The key thing that I kind of want you guys to understand is that if you understand B cell receptor um, recombination, you can easily make a T cell because they are kind of comparable to each other. And I think, hang on, let me pull it up up here. I think I have a summary video that should actually explain all of this really closely. Um, you know what, I don't have it here. So I will share that with you separately because I actually made a video that kind of synthesizes this whole process together. And I think I kept it separate because I wanted to make sure you guys actually understood the basics before I um, put it together. All right, so that is that. For XLA, the only thing I want you to understand about XLA or X-linked A-gamma globulinemia is this paragraph. You don't need to know the osmosis video, but I do need you to know that it's a BTK deficiency and that basically it results in a lack of B cells being present, mature B cells, okay? Similarly, here's all of the things for T cell function. And then you have two diseases here. You have air deficiency and you have DeGeorge syndrome. Oh, sorry, three, and bear lymphocyte syndrome. Again, I don't expect you to watch the osmosis video in depth, but I do want you to know that DeGeorge syndrome patients lack a thymus, and patients that completely lack their thymus do not develop T cells, okay? Um, and bare lymphocyte, this is kind of the way that STEP and <clears throat> others test if you understand which MHC class molecule is involved in the development of which T cell. So basically, can you do two times four equals one times eight? Because if you can, you know how BLS works, all right? All right, so here's how we get diverse receptors. I think this helps put everything together. Then we go into complement. Complement is a really, really important system that you are going to run into over and over and over again. Um, it's a really elegant system that I think is underappreciated for how much pathology it causes. Um, and so go through this. There are three pathways. I've made you two videos, one for classical and one for alternative. I didn't make a vi video for mannose binding lectin because the lectin binding pathway is essentially the classical binding pathway. It just uses a different molecule to start. Let me point out the important points of complement. I need you to know this, this table, this paragraph on opsonization, because as I've bolded and underlined here, opsonization is the most important biological activity of complement. And then I need you to know this table. Anytime there's diseases associated with a targeted immune mechanism or a targeted immune protein, you're going to want to know that because one, it's a disease and that's kind of going to be your business. Two, it's how people test your knowledge of basic science if you can interpret the disease. So make sure you know your diseases. Okay, here's all my slides um, when I have them. Remember, most of my immunology videos are... Um, cartoons, so you might not have slides, but where there are slides, I have provided them. This one actually has kind of a lot of slides because I took them from um, a previous lecture, and I kind of talk you guys through all of these, okay? All right, and here's complement. We just got to jump ahead a bit. Okay, now we're in microbiology. Whole lot of organisms in microbiology. We're going to talk about cholera, uh, Bacillus cereus and Campylobacter. Then here's where kind of the big 
um, ones are, the Enterobacteriaceae. They are a huge group of gram-negative organisms that cause a dizzying array of symptoms. Um, e. coli is in this, Yersinia pestis, the cause of bubonic plague, that one's in there. Klebsiella pneumoniae, which we learned about in Robert May, that's an Enterobacteriaceae. So make sure you understand the Enterobacteriaceae and the way you can tell them apart, okay? Um, and then I talk about the viral diarrheas, and trust me, after watching this video, you will question ever going on a cruise again. Um, so make sure you understand how those two work. All right. So we're going to spend, I'm not going to spend much time on this here in the video because in class we're actually going to spend a ton of time going through the different organisms. That's actually kind of the main focus of the class. Okay. All right. So oh, these are my slides. I keep forgetting that there are slides in here this year. That's new. Hold on. We're getting closer. Okay, so the next section that we're actually going to talk about is your pediatrics section. Um, Dr. Wilkerson um, did a couple of videos to take you through, and I talked with her about how I handle videos, and she basically followed a similar format as what I do. So she wrote her notes first, we looked over the notes together, and then she put together two videos, and you have slides for that. It's basically an hour lecture that she's broken down into smaller pieces. So you have your notes and you have your videos. They should overlap very closely, so you can kind of choose your own adventure like you do with my stuff, okay? All right, following her stuff, you have self-study questions. You pretty much only have self-study questions for my stuff. There's no self-study really, I think, um, for practitioner. There are some for pediatrics, and I'd take uh, note of that. Okay, it isn't in here yet, but there will be three page pages added for practitioner. This is a relatively short self-study guide, but it is full of some complex, dense material. If you don't understand it right away, that's okay. Do the class session on Monday. See how you do there, and if at that point you're still like, I don't know, you keep talking about letters and I have no clue what you're talking about, that's okay. Just let me know. We can meet, I can hold a review session, and we'll find a way of like going through the whole thing so that you understand how we get unique antigen receptors, what complement is, why people get sick when they lack complement or can't rearrange receptors, and what's missing in a pediatric history. Okay? All right, good luck, and I will see you in class.